Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to look at solubility curves. So if you haven't done so, please take out your reference table and go to table G. So we will touch upon how to use table G. We're gonna to touch upon a saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated solutions. Now let's get started. In this unit of solutions, we have done a little bit of vocab. And so feel free to pause this video to review any vocab that you may not be so sure of or you know want to do a little bit of review for yourself. So the vocab I have here, a solution, solute, solvent, precipitate, solubility, and dissociation. All right, let's get started. So when we're looking at solubility curves, there's a lot of curves on table G, as you can see right here. There's a lot of curves. It can be overwhelming. When we're looking at one of the solubility curves, we have to be cautious that we're only looking at that one and not confuse it with the other. This is something that happens to anyone. It could happen to anyone. So when you're looking at that curve, and let's say a problem gives you, at a certain temperature, this is how much grams of the solute is being dissolved in 100 grams of water, because table G is out of 100 grams of water. Let's say they give you the points, and the point that they give you falls on the curve. If it falls on the curve, that is a saturated solution. So if it's on the curve, it's a saturated solution. If the point that they give you is under the curve, that is an unsaturated solution. One way that you can remember this, unsaturated, under. So, unsaturated solution, in other words, below the curve. So right here. If it's a supersaturated solution, that means that it's above the curve. So supersaturated above the curve. So here we have this pinkish area. This is under the curve. So it will be an unsaturated solution. Over here we have this purple-ish area. Anything above the curve that is a supersaturated solution. All right. Let's go to table G. So there are times where they ask you, okay, how many grams of solute was dissolved in 100 grams of water, which is something that table G is out of. It says solubility, grams of solute dissolved in 100 grams of water, or G solute per 100 grams of water. Now the question can ask you, what if it's out of 200 grams of water, how many grams of solute was dissolved then? If a question asks about 200 grams of water, you will have to double the amount of solute. Now if the question asks for 50 grams of water, then you will half the amount of solute. Don't worry, we'll get into a problem right now. So let's go to the first one. It says determine the mass of KNO3 that dissolves in 100 grams of water at 40 degrees Celsius to produce a saturated solution. Okay, saturated solution. Right then and there, they're asking me for a point that is on the curve. Right, they didn't say unsaturated, they didn't say supersaturated, they said saturated. Saturated means on the curve. Now they said what solute they're talking about. It says KNO3. So I'm going to go to table G and I'm going to look for KNO3. And I see it right here. And there's this little arrow that tells me which curve KNO3 is. So I'm just going to outline this as much as I can, as neatly as I can. We can look at it. I'm already messing up. All right. 
almost done okay so that's kno3 so at this point you are ignoring every other curve you are ignoring every other curve they're only asking you for kno3 the mass of kno3 that dissolved in 40 in 100 grams of water now table g is out of 100 grams of water how do we know right here the y-axis it tells us that grams of solute per 100 grams of water so table g is out of 100 grams of water something was dissolved in 100 grams of water h2o they're asking you how much of kno3 was dissolved at 40 degrees celsius so how much of kno3 how many grams of kno3 was dissolved at 40 degrees celsius so I'm going to go to the y-axis and I'm going to look for 40 because, ooh, not the y-axis, the x-axis. And I'm going to look for 40 because the x-axis is temperature. So I'm going to go to the 40 and I'm going to go up until I touch the curve. Once again, I am touching the curve because they're asking me for a saturated solution. At this point, I touched the curve and now I'm going to go to see how much grams of this KNO3 was dissolved in 100 grams of water. And I would say it's about like 63, 64, 63, 64, something like that. So since it's an approximate, perfectly fine, I'm just going to put 64 grams of KNO3 was dissolved in 100 grams of water at 40 degrees Celsius. All right, that was our first example. Let's go to the next. It says, how many grams of NaNO3 would have been added to 100 grams of water at 45 degrees Celsius to make a saturated solution of salt? All right, feel free to pause this video Try it yourself, and then come back, and we'll do it together. So, keyword here, it says saturated solution. Once again, what does saturated mean? It touches the curve. It's on the curve. And it's telling me what solute I'm looking at, NaNO3. And it is out of 100 grams of water. So if it's out of 100 grams of water, I don't need to do any doubling or um, halving at this point because table G is out of 100 grams. So I'm going to look for NaNO3. I'm going to circle it. Once again, this little arrow is telling me which curve it is. I'm going to highlight it as neatly as I can. Oof, that was a little messy. All right, and it says at 45 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to go to 40, between 40 and 45, I would say it's like around here. So I got to go all the way up. I'm going to do this dotted line here. It's not going to be perfectly straight, but we'll get there. Okay. All right, so I'm at 45 degrees Celsius. I reached the curve because it said a saturated solution. So it's on the curve. And now I'm going to go to the y-axis to figure out how much grams of NaNO3 was dissolved in 100 grams of water at 45 degrees Celsius. So at this point, touch the x-axis, it says 110. So 110 grams of Na. NO3 was dissolved in 100 grams of water because y-axis tells us out of 100 grams of water and they're asking us out of 100 grams of water and this was at 45 degrees Celsius okay now let's get to 
when they ask us for different numbers of water, a different mass of water. So let's go back to the problem. It says, for NaNO3, we figured out that it's 110 grams of NaNO3 that dissolves in 100 grams of water at 45 degrees Celsius. So this is the same question. I'm going to put 110 grams of NaNO3. And now I'm going to go to the next one. It says, how many grams of NaNO3 would have been added to 50 grams of water at 45 degrees Celsius to make a saturated solution? So here it says 50 grams of water. All right, so let's use what we have from question number one. So table G is out of 100 grams of water that the solute was dissolved. So I'm going to do a little bit of um, algebra to figure out question number two. So from question one, I found out that 110 grams of NaNO3 was dissolved in 100 grams of water. Now they're asking me, how much would have been dissolved in 50 grams of water? And it's talking about the same temperature, right? The temperature has not changed. They're talking about the same solute. The solute has not changed. But they're saying in 50 grams of water, how much would have been dissolved? And we're still talking about a saturated solution. So I am going to figure that out right now. So they're asking me in terms of 50 grams of water, how much grams do I have of NaNO3? Well, in order to go from 100 to 50, I have to divide this by 2. I have to do the same thing for the grams of the solute. So I'm also going to divide this by 2. So 110 divided by 2, go ahead and put that on your calculator. If you're doing it in your head, you can do 100 divided by 2, that's 50. 10 divided by 2, that's 5. So 110 divided by 2, that's 55 grams. Okay, so for question number 2, the answer is 55 grams and A and O3. All right, let's go to number three. It says, how many grams of NaNO3 would have been added to 200 grams of water at 45 degrees Celsius to make a saturated solution of this salt? Now we're talking about 200 grams of water. Once again, we're going to use table G. We already know how much grams of NaNO3 is dissolved in 100 grams. So I'm going to do this. Once again, I'm going to draw a little squeal line to separate my work. 110 grams of NaNO3 is dissolved when I have 100 grams of water. But now they're asking me for 200. So I'm going to draw an arrow here. For 200 grams of H2O, I'm running out of space. For 200 grams, in order to go from 100 to 200, I have to multiply this by 2. Same thing over here. 110 times 2, I get 220 grams of NaNO3. So this is my answer. 220 grams NaNO3. How did we get this? We multiplied it by 